Hello, my name is Leslie, and this is The Sewing Circle. Welcome. Welcome to my tiny trailer where I do all my sewing and creating. Today, we're going to start out this episode talking about my favorite little girl's dress knit pattern, the Syncadia dress. It's a free pattern, and if you've been around a while, you know that I love to sew that dress up, and my daughters love that dress for my granddaughters. So recently, I had made a little dress for my oldest daughter, Melissa's little girl, Addison, and sent it to her, and she loved it so much, she picked a few more dress colors out, and I just got them sewn up for her. The first one is in this lovely pumpkin color. I just love how this dress goes together. It's so quick and easy. It's so durable, and it's very easy to adjust to sizing. So Addison's a little bit tall. I did add a couple inches to the bottom of her, of her dress. Um, this one has this, like, this cute little cuff. Um, this, this hanger's a little wonky for it, but you can see it has a very nice little neckline, a very basic waist. And, um, yeah, so I'm excited for her to have this dress. The other one she chose is a sage for the fall. And this is a little waffle fabric in sage. I did use elastic on the edges of this one. You can see a little elastic there. Um... But this basic knit pattern is free, it's fun, it's easy, and the little girls love them. Along with the dresses, I made a little pack of the Sunshine Skivvies for Addison out of the fabrics I hadn't used before for my daughter Fern. Fern was so cute. When her package arrived, she would pull out each pair of underwear and give them a little kiss and then look at the next one and kiss it. It was so precious to watch on FaceTime. So I do have these things together for Addison and now her baby brother that's coming. I've been working on this quilt for her, for him. And um, I don't know if you remember, I asked a lot of you about what kind of colors to use with this quilt. Um, and I got a lot of great help and feedback. I did add this lovely little animal print. Isn't it so cute? to match the giraffes that I had found for this. Now, I have the edging all sewn on, and as you can maybe see, I have it all pressed and ready to fold over onto my batting and my backing. Um, this edging is just gorgeous. I love it. it, has little ferns on it. I'll be backing this quilt with this lovely, kind of a, again, a pumpkin-y color, pumpkin, pumpkin pie maybe, colored flannel. Um, and then I will be knotting it. So that is going to be completed as soon as I get back from Puerto Vallarta, my birthday trip. Now, I told you and you know that I have 19 grandchildren and four more on the way. So that will be 23 grandchildren by January. I just love putting together these little quilts for my grandchildren. Each one is stitched up with love and prayer by stitching together a little comfy quilt for their baby. So um, with the leftovers from that quilt, I started working on my daughter Melanie's quilt for her little boy. And these little blocks are what I've come up with. Melanie is having a boy and it is due in January and it is her first baby. So I'm really excited for her. This, These quilt blocks, I'm deciding between the next color being this kind of sage green or this denim -y blue. It'll be like the main color to offset all these blocks. And I may, I may put them together on point so that when you hold the quilt, it's they're up on point. Or I may put them together like this. I'm not sure yet. This is the backing that I had gotten for that quilt. But again, I'm not completely sold on it. So we will see. If you have any thoughts, let me know. Anyway, I'm excited about getting the baby quilts done. After those two, then I'll be working on the quilts for the twins. And that's going to be really fun. Boy and girl, do I make them to match? Do I don't make them to match? What are your thoughts? So this past week, I went into Joann's again to pick up some 
um, things for another project that I'm working on and the patterns were $1.99. I did not know that, so I did end up picking up a couple of them. I love listening to Regency romances. I love old-fashioned dresses. I absolutely adore costuming for like period, period time periods. And so I picked up two of the costume patterns that I was really, really looking for. I'm looking for them to be on sale. <laughs> the first one is McCall's 7885. This is just a lovely, lovely dress. Can you imagine living in the era when you would wear one of these? Oh my goodness, I would love it. When I was a little girl, I had a hoop skirt. And I used to put it on and cover it with sheets and try to dress like this. So to make this dress for myself would be kind of a dream come true. Now, sometimes we want to do things and we don't even know why. And we think, where would I even wear that? I don't need to wear it anywhere. I'm going to make it and I'm going to take pictures in it. And I just will be happy that I made it. Anyway, I picked up the fabric, some fabric at a thrift shop for this. And I will show you that later. But um, the dress itself takes 12 and 5 eighths yards. And the lining takes 11 and 3 eighths yards. So that's a lot of fabric for one dress. The other one I picked up that I'm really excited about as well is McCall's 7988. Again, a very periodical dress. Look at the bodice on that thing. I can't wait. Look at the sleeves. It's so cute. The back of it is very, very gathered in. So I'm excited to have these two patterns in my possession. Will I get one of these maybe for Halloween? Probably not. But um, the idea is to make a dress that I would love to make, love to be challenged with. So that was exciting. I love when you walk into Joann's and they have patterns for $1.99. Such a great savings. So last week I did the, the makeover on the tiny trailer and you saw that I put metal under my cutting board, my cutting mat. I didn't, that wasn't originally my thought. That was a thought that I, that was an idea I picked up somewhere watching someone on YouTube most likely. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time. So these are the magnets that I had picked up. I have some of these, whoop, I'm dropping them. Some of the bigger ones and then I had some of these littler ones to mess around with. I wasn't sure which ones were gonna work best. Both of them work really good. Like they're hard to pull back off my mat. So someone was saying to, I maybe should cover them with, with wasabi tape. That's a cute idea. But what, what I had in mind was um, little things from this kawaii craft life. This book is so cute. It's all, it's all um, little things made out of felt. But the the thing, the things that I wanted to use to recover my magnets were these little woodland creatures to start with. So I've got them all cut out, and I've made one of them. I made this little guy. And he has a magnet inside of him. So you can kind of see it through the back that it's the big square magnet. Maybe you can. There he is. But um, isn't that so adorable? So easy, so fun, so fast. And so my idea is to make many, many things out of this to cover different magnets. I want to make this one. Um, one of the things I do when I have a book like this, I have made lots of like stuffed bunnies, little felt things out of books like this and you open the back and here are your patterns and the idea is like you're going to trace them cut them out pin them to your felt and and you know like if you look like some of these pieces are very tiny so what I do is I put it on the copy machine like that make a copy of my pattern and then I just rough cut them out pin them on my felt and then just cut around the actual pattern edge like edge like I'm cutting out the pattern through the felt as I go when I have little tiny pieces like this I just string them on a pen so that they stay with their pattern piece I know what they are and I just take them off as I use them so these are 
These are little pieces that I've cut out. This is going to be the fox next and then the owl. So I'm excited about that. It'll be a really fun addition to have in my sewing room. My little critters that are my magnets for holding down my patterns on my new cutting table. So yay! It's going to be so fun. That concludes this episode of The Sewing Circle. Thank you for joining me. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you next week from Puerto Vallarta. Bye!